Hi everyone. Let's take a look at problem 7-8 dealing with the characteristic line of cap M. Okay, you're given the following data and we've got some historical rates of return for the New York Stock Exchange and for stock Y for 11 years. We also have the uh, average return given by the mean and the standard deviation of the New York Stock Exchange and stock Y. Okay, now on part A it says construct a scatter diagram showing the relationship between returns on stock Y in the market. Use a spreadsheet or calculator with a linear regression function to estimate beta. Okay, I'm going to slide the screen down. Now I've copied that data in to Excel already so we can get started on uh, estimating this using linear regression. And here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to highlight this range right here. Okay, now that I've got that highlighted, I'll go up to the menu and choose a scatter diagram. But I want to slide up because I think it will drop it in an area that we won't see it if I'm scrolled down. So we'll choose scatter and a scatter diagram. And now it moved it here. I'm going to slide that down. Let me drop that where I want it to be. Okay, so now you can see that on the screen. Let me move it a little bit over here. Um, you know, we really... Uh, this is company Y. Let me sort of shrink this down. And I think it even is going to give us a value for X somewhere. Um, then we can right click on the points and add a trend line and we'll choose a linear, let me sort of move this so you can see it, add a linear trend line and I want the equation on the chart and I'd like the R squared as well and I'll hit close and now we've used linear regression to draw a trend line and come up with the information we need. Um, Okay, so using the linear trend line, we've come up with beta. Part A said use the spreadsheet or a calculator with linear regression to estimate beta. And beta is given by that point 0.617. So the answer to part A is approximately, uh, the, pre, the beta is approximately uh, 0 0.62 is our beta. Um, and it's using linear regression to determine the slope of that line, which is essentially what beta is when we're comparing the returns of one company to the overall market as a whole. Okay, now that we've got that down, let's take a look at Part B. Part B says, give a verbal interpretation of what the regression line and the beta coefficient show about stockwise volatility and relative risk is compared with those of other stocks. Okay, well, what I would say on part two, on part B is that because we've got a beta that's uh, at 0 0.62, which is less than 1, it, the stock Y is approximately 62% per, as volatile uh, as the overall market. Uh, therefore, its relative risk is much less than the overall market. Its relative risk, you could say, is about 62% of an average firm in the market. Okay, now on, on Part C, it says, suppose the scatter of points had been more spread out, but the regression line was exactly where your present graph shows it. How would this affect, one, the firm's risk of the stock held in a one-asset portfolio, and two, the actual risk premium on the stock if the cap M holds exactly. Okay, well, the thing to point out in Part C is that the total risk would be greater, right? I mean, if these points are farther away from this line, then we've got um, uh, more risk of returns of that stock relative to the market as a whole. Um, let me slide up a little bit and drop that formula in that we've seen before. Okay, this formula here again tells, tells us how we define beta and what we see is 
beta is some measure of the relative risk um, uh, measured by standard deviation of a particular stock to the overall market. So if we've increased that risk, uh, the beta would go up. So uh, hopefully you see that that uh, um, that this the term, the beta term that we use, or the term that we use in calculating beta, would go up, and therefore risk would go up as well. Okay, let's take a look at the other part of that question. The actual uh, and suppose this, if the scatter points had been more spread out, how would this affect the actual risk premium on the stock if the cap n holds exactly? Okay, well cap m assumes that company specific risk would be eliminated in a portfolio. Um, so what that means is, uh, in a perfect, what was the terms they used here? If cap m holds exactly, um, then then the risk premium wouldn't be affected because we've assumed we've eliminated it in the portfolio anyway. Okay, let's tackle part D. Now suppose the regression line had been downward sloping and the beta coefficient had been negative. What would this imply about stockwise relative risk? Well, let's tackle just that first part. If the line was negative sloping, and the coefficient had been negative, then what we'd know is the stock's variance wouldn't change, right? The relationship of risk of one return to the another is called um, uh, the method of least squares, and in squaring, the negative sign goes away. So what this tells us is the stock's variance wouldn't change, but the risk of the stock to an investor holding in a diversified portfolio would greatly be reduced because he's now found an investment that goes the opposite direction. When all other stocks are going up, this one goes down, so he has a great chance to, to uh, reduce, reduce overall risk through, through diversification. Um, number two says, what would this imply about the correlation with the market? Well, it, it would be negatively correlated with the overall market. And number three says, or asks us, what, what would this imply about the probable risk premium? premium? Alright, my thoughts here are, a ne we've got a negative, a, a stock with a negative beta, that's pretty unusual, and because it's relatively scarce, and the beneficial impact on portfolio, portfolio and portfolios that would include it, its risk premium is likely to be very low or uh, even negative. So in theory, the probable risk premium uh, would even be negative. Okay everyone, I hope that uh, helped you work through this problem.